Amazon rainforest is full of mystery. The biodiversity of tropical forest is so great that millions of species exist here still unknown to man. To be allowed to live in this environment for a short while as a tourist and be guided by Indians is a privilege. In fact, ecotourism is one of the few activities that can help save the rainforest for future generations. The worldwide fund for nature's expedition will take us sport fishing in this vast homeland of the American Indians, if you dare. South America, site of the world's largest river, the Amazon. Over a thousand smaller rivers flow into the Amazon from as far away as in the Andes. And this is where our expedition is to take place, in little Ecuador, right on the equator. We begin high up in the clouds, three to 4,000 meters above sea level. Here, the Highland Indians live by farming, as in this volcanic crater. <laughs> this is the home of the Andean condor, the largest of them all. Its wingspan is more than three meters. The condor is an endangered species, but in Ecuador its numbers have started to grow again, for here it is protected. Quito, the capital, is 2,800 meters above the sea. This was one of the last strongholds of the Inca Empire. About one million inhabitants live here, out of Ecuador's total population of 10 million. a small country in South America, but politically quite stable. Therefore, Ecuador as a nation is moving forward, and people here can live in peace, devoting their energies to family and work, such as handicrafts. Textiles are still dyed with plant material over open fires. The impressive patterns have been passed down for generations from Indian cultures thousands of years old. The largest birds living here as do the smallest. Of 315 known species of hummingbird, 123 can be found in Ecuador. Ornithologist Juan Carrion uses a net to catch them. But filming them is far from easy. They are like miniature jet copters. Up to 78 wing beats per second. Their motion freezes in midair while they sip the nectar from flowers. Without the help of Juan's net, we would not have managed a close up at all. The name is Shining Sunbeam, and it's one of the few hummingbirds with uh, no green colors. And if you catch a hummingbird, this is the way for handling. There's no problems from the beak. These are Tyrian nettle tails, the male. 
very distinctive glittering green throat. One of the smallest hummingbirds here. If you want to study hummingbirds, this is the country, this is the place, Ecuador. And so we set off down this pass to adventure far, far below. Halfway down, we enter the cloud forest. Here at 2,000 meters, it's nearly always cloudy. Don Lucho, machete in hand, has a full-time job clearing paths for scientists and tourists when they want to see one of the finest views in the entire country. The San Rafael Falls, Ecuador's mightiest waterfall, 146 meters high. Like us, this water is bound for the great Amazon Basin. It's extremely humid here and 30 degrees centigrade. We are right where the rainforest starts in Coyabino Wildlife Reserve, where we are about to start an expedition into the world's largest rainforest, larger than the whole of Europe. It is over 3,000 kilometers from here to the Atlantic, but the drop from here is only 250 meters. The Amazon basin is remarkably flat. Our first reaction is that no one has ever been here before, but then we arrive at the camp. Bamboo huts on poles built by Indians. Very cozy, actually, but there are already guests here. <laughs> we introduce it to a smaller spider. <laughs> the tarantula does not hunt humans. It can bite if cornered, and then the effect on a human can be serious, but nothing fatal so far, as far as we know. This hairy creature does have its own problems, with a wasp known as the devil's horse. Life is never easy, not even for a tarantula. Sport fishing in the Amazon basin is really exclusive. We are actually the first fishing expedition ever in this area. No one knows how many species of fish there are here. In the entire Amazon region, some 1,500 different species have been found up until now. And we could easily catch a species never before identified. However, there is one fish here you have heard about before, the piranha. George McCabe, our fly fishing expert from Canada, learns a trick guaranteed to attract piranha to our boat. Splashing the water, the Indians say, calling the piranha. And a silver grape from the Swedish Museum of Natural History in Stockholm and Dr. Bariga from Quito are both specialists on the fish in the Amazon region and they will identify what we catch. There are at least 30 species of piranha here all carnivores. Some grow up to five or six pounds and you really have to watch out because their teeth are every bit as sharp as their reputation states. Our guide, Oswaldo Munoz, demonstrates what a black piranha is capable of. Takes it right off. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Let me count my fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. A white piranha. <laughs> Tintin also comes up with a red one. Piranhas seem to strike at anything. But mind your fingers. Another fish to watch out for is the dogfish. Yep, you want to you want Magnus and Martin both get bites at the same time. 
Ja, ja, ja. Helis. Kolla de tänderna, vet du. Ska vi se om det händer en olycka nu eller? Ja. Fan, så var häftigt. Ha? På wobbler. Sicken firra alltså. Kolla de under tänderna. Så den fäller in i överläppen. Vadå Dracula? Åh, oh, den är stark! Så då, jag får se mig hem igen. Den lilla fisken. Hej då! We're not out after the fish, just a bite. Apart from a few piranha for bait, we release all we catch. We want as little as possible to disturb the balance of this ecosystem. We call it eco-fishing. Jag träcker också, förstår man väldigt lätt, fiskens mun. Tar man bort en krok så blir det mycket lättare att kroka loss fisken. This is catch and release, so we can't fuss around with the fish for several minutes. Another thing we do is to squeeze the barb on the hook. This saves the fish even more. We try a number of fishing techniques and we soon learn which ones work best here. Wobblers and flies. George and Jürgen catch all kinds of fish with flies. Just what type of fly doesn't seem to matter much, as long as it is dramatic and colorful. Yeah, yeah, good. Small one. <laughs> Monster. Okay, doctor, you don't want it? Okay. A small, strange tetra species, which Dr. Bariga wants to keep and have a closer look at. Okay. The piranha are really persistent, but then we get the bite which we had hoped for all along, a new fish, one which has never before been recorded in Ecuador. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's something else. A freshwater herring. And these very pictures will be sufficient evidence for this discovery, because the herring... Oh, oh, just takes off. Then the rain comes, as you might expect in a rainforest, every day. Not for long, but plenty of it. The annual rainfall here is over four meters. Anyway, a little rain never held a real man back. A dogfish on a Mickey Finn fly. But, by the way, does a real man really have wet weather gear in that color? Oh dear. When it comes to night fishing, all we can say is that the fish of the Amazon seem to sleep at night. The only creatures we meet are a few small caimans. Before we go any deeper into the Amazon basin, we must talk about the real reason for being here at all. Why are rainforests being cleared? In Ecuador's case, the answer is oil. And with oil extraction go the usual devastating effects. In actual fact, it is the secondary impact which is the real threat. Forests have to be cleared for pipelines and pumping stations. And roads have to be built for access. And with the roads come colonization. Hopeful people clearing forest for houses, agriculture and livestock. But after a few years, they are forced to move further on, to break new ground, to start all over again. For the earth dies. The Amazon soils are not rich. Uh, all the nutrients are in the forest, in the biomass itself, but not in the soil. The canopies of the trees provide shade, and this shade then keeps the temperature of the soil so 
these uh, microorganisms are able to live in a rather symbiotic relationship with the trees. It's impossible to reforest the Amazon basin because once the soil has been exposed to the rays of the sun, uh, it is uh, practically dead. In the same time you watch this program, 1,600 hectares of tropical rainforest will be cleared forever, one football field every second. In just 50 years, the rainforests on this planet have been reduced by half. The problem is that man produces far too much carbon dioxide, increasing the average temperature on Earth, the greenhouse effect. Plants are good at absorbing carbon dioxide, but the felling and clearing goes on and on. We continue to produce even more carbon dioxide. The greenhouse effect will create imbalances no one can yet fully predict. What will happen, for example, if the polar ice caps begin to melt? After us, the deluge? Ecuador has begun to think about their rainforest. People are realizing that oil is a short-term benefit, but that ecotourism is a long-term one. We come upon some really determined clearers of rainforest, but let them carry on. Leaf-cutting ants are found only in South America, working from dawn to dusk to carry certain types of leaf back to their underground homes. There, the leaves are chewed and mixed, and on this mixture, a unique fungus grows, which they eat. So they grow their own food. Once the fragment of leaf has been cut, the long trek begins. Sometimes they have to carry their booty several hundred meters back to the nest. That fungus just has to be worth all the trouble. There are endless fascinating small creatures here in the rainforest. Like the praying mantis. Och så Det är roligt att se. Jag inte ramla. Ramla inte nu till gubben. The boats are painstakingly hollowed from gigantic tree trunks, solid craft and very roomy. Time now to move deeper into the Amazon basin. We encounter many remarkable things, but this has to be the strangest, for what kind of dinosaur could be roaring from over there? Aha, uh -huh. howler monkeys. And look here, an inquisitive sake monkey that joins us for a while. But above all, we see birds. Ecuador is perhaps the country with the greatest number of bird species on Earth, 1,600. Twice as many as in all of Europe, and the parrots here do not have their wings clipped. Toucans with their improbable beaks are plentiful here. The oddest bird, though, is surely the Hudson. Scarcely able to fly at all, it manages only in short bursts. George is also an ornithologist, so he cannot help constantly swapping rod for binoculars. But perhaps he ought to concentrate on only one thing at a time. Uh, 17 points to number one. George McKay for a hit behind the left ear. Good catch. <laughs> <laughs> These waters can be hazardous to your health because here swim thousands of piranha, cavemen, stingrays, electric eels, anacondas, and Martin from Sweden. Look over there. What was that? Martin calling the piranha. Dinner is served. But as long as there is no blood, the piranha shouldn't attack. Martin takes his chances so we can catch a glimpse of this particular local. <laughs> the freshwater dolphin. It has lived in these waters ever since the Earth's surface lifted six million years ago. Playful and curious, like all dolphins, but still a little wary of Martin, who at least emerges unscathed. 
Oh, which is more than we can say about this two canary. The piranha got its tail fin, but we catch more. What's the name again of this? Oh, that's ten. This is my pride, yeah. There are much bigger and stronger fishes than the sabalo, but then we move on. The most indelible memory from this journey will be our meeting with Victoriano, chief of the Siona Indians, and also a medicine man or shaman. He is skilled in healing the sick with all the resources of nature and through powerful hallucinations. This vine is called ayahuasca. You cut this sections of it and you boil it in water and then you drink it and it activates the pineal gland, or the third eye. This vine is not used by everybody, only by the shaman. It's a whole ceremony, a whole uh, profession that you have to go through. And then you boil it, and you get a very thick red-orange tea, which you drink when the sun goes down. Después uno ve mejor. A eso que es lo más durísimo. Pero tú tienes que controlar eso. A eso, tú sabes, pues, sí, tú sabes hay que controlar eso. Y después eh, tú, ve, tú curas a pacientes ahí, también. Ahí, 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 ah. después. Y viendo la gente, cómo viene la gente, y cómo las montaciones, y qué clase de gente, entonces puede decir que están tan, tan, tan personas, tan personales, tan a nosotros, que están de esa parte de la gente, y cómo que está a veces enfermo, que está ahí, a montar sí mismo indicas, ellos mismos se avisan, entonces, bueno, los coge las enfermedades, y mismos, en quitas, Mm -hmm. un, como una de las de esa araña de la social mismo que tiene la terita mm -hmm. del por encima de, mm -hmm. medio taparito no mm -hmm. ellos le quita todos y lleva de la salud la gente mm -hmm. he is very very serious mm -hmm. about it and it really works often people from the cities after the modern medical doctors cannot do anything for them they come here as a last resort there must be hundreds of shamans like victoriano around the amazon men whose knowledge of nature has passed through generations and has never been written down all that wisdom simply cannot be allowed to disappear and now we are right on the border with peru here, the black waters of the Umoya River, which we have traveled down, meet the white waters of the Aguarico. But where there is white water, insect repellent is called for in lavish quantities. Now, out with the tackle for giant catfish. Hur känner du att vi ska lägga ut varsitt med tackel? Ganska så tungt sänken, 60-70 gram, vajer och stadkrok. With piranha as bait. Some large creature is taking Tintin's line straight across the river. You have to follow it with the boat. I to the boat. I'm going to the boat. I'm going to the the boat. I'm going to the the there are over 200 species of catfish around the Amazon. This lechero can grow to be over 500 pounds. I hear to truly fight. Martin gets into a battle which lasts over half an hour, sometimes all the way over into Peru. <sighs> And the little Magnus hooks something which takes out 300 meters of line in a single rush. Oh, 
We will never find out what that was, but Magnus gets his revenge. Magnus fights his catch for an hour, quite a stretch for a 15-year-old. <laughs> the fish is really very tired. He even snores. Very good, guy. Yeah. Yes, this is good. Six, twenty-seven. Sugar, six, zero. Jeez. What's the date? Huh? Magnus's parrot catfish and all the other fish we catch are carefully documented by Anders, who will continue to work on his material back at the Museum of Natural History. Do you think this catfish is big? Take a look at these waves then. Here swims the biggest fish in the Amazon area, the Arapama gigas, three meters long and several hundred pounds. The Indians call it paiche, and they use ancient methods to catch it. Paiche. Andes siempre burbujeando, el país andes siempre burbujeando, entonces uno es estudia para poder pescar. Apenas que él sale, entonces nosotros echamos rem unos tres, cuatro remas, entonces le lanzamos en la burbuja, o sea que calculamos dónde está el animal. Se le coge con el arpón. Entonces, para pescar eso tenemos que tener mucha paciencia. We try for several days using everything except the harpoon. Not much luck at all. <laughs> it ain't a paiche, but it's, uh, it'll show you that a piranha will go after anything. One big fish coming. In the end, we even begin to use the sonar of our navigator to track it down. Closer, 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 closer. Holy, look at him. And then on the last day, George gets something big on a lure. Oh, he's heading for the weed. He's heading for the foot. I like it. Oh, oh, it's off into the forest and around the tree. Oh, oh. oh, but the line snaps. Did you see it? Yeah. A big. I don't know. Well. <laughs> you shouldn't win them all. The Amazon will never reveal all of its mysteries. But if you should ever come here and catch a paiche, do remember us. You might send us a photo so we also can find out what it really looks like.